How's it going everyone? CJ from On The Grow here and today I wanted to answer the question of if I place microgreens closer to the light source, will I get better growth from my microgreens? So stay tuned for the experiment to find out. All right, y'all. So like I stated in the intro, today what I wanted to find out is if we take our microgreens and place them closer to light, how would that affect the growth? Now, in theory, what that should do is it increases the par. So the closer you get to your light source, the more par that you have. But there is a fine line to how much par is too much par or too much light for microgreens. And that's what I'm hoping we're going to find out some information on today. So what I did is 10 days ago, I started an experiment where I have four trays, two of which are at our normal distance, and then two trays are actually propped up on a one and a quarter inch um, tall tray so that they are that much closer to the light. So let's go ahead and take a look at these trays on the shelf, talk about the heights of each of them, uh, how far they are from the, the light source, and more information around the light intensity, like the par and things like that. Now, most growers actually have their shelves positioned at 12 inches apart for their shelves. For us, we actually do 10 inches. The reason that we do 10 inches from shelf to shelf is because number one, we want our lights to be a little bit closer to our crop. And two, it allows us to put an additional shelf or two onto a single rack. So we're being more efficient with our space for each rack and we're adding more gross square footage uh, per cubic foot, I guess you could say. So that is our height from shelf to shelf. Now from the bottom of the shelf to the light, what is that at? So we are actually sitting at eight and a half inches from the top of the shelf to the bottom of the LED light right here. Now, if we go from the top of the tray, these are the one and quarter inch tall bootstrap farmer shallow trays. If we do this to the bottom of the light, we are at seven inches, between seven and a quarter and seven inches. Um, so let's just say seven inches, just to make it easy here. Now from the top of the canopy, you know, we can just keep this measurement train going. We are four and a half inches from the canopy to the lights. Now let's talk about the tray next to it. What I did is I took a single tray, one of these bootstrap farmer one and a quarter inch trays. I flipped it upside down to act as a riser and get this just one and a quarter inches closer to our light source. From the top of the tray to the bottom of the light, we are just under six inches. So we're probably 5.8 or something like that inches tall uh, from the light source, from the top of the tray to the lights. And then from the canopy to the lights, we are a mere three and a half inches. So we're substantially closer, even though it's only one and a quarter inches, that is a huge jump in par potentially. And it's a big jump in getting these things a lot closer to the light. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the light output for uh, the shelves at these different heights. To do that, I'm gonna be using this Apogee Instruments Quantum Flux par measure in a sense. It's like a $500 little sensor here to measure light. And this is because people say lumens are for humans and par is for plants. So this is how we measure them. I wish that there was something more accessible to most people because $500 for a single uh, light measuring tool is just not sustainable for a lot of people. No, not a lot of people can afford it, but any bit, any boohoo. Let's go ahead and get our measurements here. So from, let's see how we're going to do this. Hmm. This is kind of tricky. Okay, to do this, what I'm gonna do is actually pull these off the shelf real quick and just set down some standard trays. That way we can get an idea without having this canopy in our way. All right, cool. So these are the exact same trays. These are the Bootstrap Farmer 1020 shallow trays. Let's go ahead and get a look here. I'm gonna be measuring both of the light sources in the middle of this rack. These get the most light from the outsides of the bulbs, whereas the trays on the outside get a little bit less because the bulbs don't carry on like they do for the middle. Now let's go ahead and start at the middle. I'm just gonna place this in the bottom middle of our tray right here that's at the normal height. And we're sitting at about 88 par. Now, if I raise this up to the top of the middle, we're sitting at about 90 par from the top of the tray to the lights. Now, if we do the same thing over here, setting this down, we're at 89, 88, 88 par in the middle of the tray. Oh, no, 90 par. Oh my gosh, make up your mind. 96 par in the uh, middle of this tray. And if we go up to the top of this, we are at 102 par. So 102 at the top of this edge compared to 93 at the top of the other edge. So just raising this up just a pinch closer. 
we're getting a pretty substantial boost in par there. Now the question is, will this have enough effect on these crops to actually make a difference in the growth? We saw that there was a slight jump in that par, which is really exciting, and that does confirm my whole thing, that the closer that you get to light, the more par or lumens that you have, the more light output that you're going to be getting from that. Now your light dispersion is actually gonna be a lot worse the closer that you get, but that's a whole different subject. What we need to do now is I'm gonna get all these pulled off the shelf, I'm gonna set them onto the table, and we're gonna take a look at all of these side by side. Before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and share with you guys how I did this experiment. All right, so 10 days ago, I took four of our Bootstrap Farmer 1020 trays and I filled them with six cups of soil each. If you guys are curious, that breaks down to about $2.12 of soil per tray uh, using the Burpees organic soil that I used. I then seeded 15 grams of purple kohlrabi per tray. After all the trays were seeded, I then misted all of them with plain tap water and then stacked them up into a three day weighted period uh, of germination and then one additional day of blackout. After these went through the full four days of blackout, they then spent an additional six days in the light and that is where we're at today. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get these pulled off the shelf and let's take a look at all these side by side. So I have all of these trays pulled out now and they are all sitting level next to one another. Let's go ahead and dig into the actual heights on all of them. So we'll start over here on the one that was sat at the normal height. Overall, I'm really happy with the growth on this product. I think that the canopy looks really nice. It looks very even. The cotyledon size is a beautiful, nice, rounded, and very thick looking cotyledon. I'm very happy with the, uh, the size and shape of it. And consistency across the tray looks really nice uh, across the board. Onto the tray next to it, it looks a little scraggly up front, but other than that, it looks very consistent throughout it. And in fact, I would say that we have very similar growth uh, between the, these two groups right here. And I wonder which one, it feels like the, um, the tray that was a little bit higher has a little bit glossier of a cotyledon compared to uh, the side that was not uh, just that much, just that tiny, tiny bit closer. On to our second normal height tray. Again, I'm very happy with the growth across this one. It looks really solid. Cotyledon size is beautiful and the coloration is really, really uh, nice. Comparing it to the one that was rised. And again, I'm just seeing some really beautiful growth here. It's really hard to tell at first glance. They all do look really quite similar. I'm not seeing anything that really tells me uh, that one group has done much better than the other. I will say that the ones right here and here look a little bit taller, the ones that were a little bit shorter on the shelf. So I think that they stretch just a tiny bit more for light than the ones that were placed above them. Now it is time to harvest and look at all of these side by side. Okay, we're gonna start off with the first of the normal height purple kohlrabi trays. That is some very beautiful looking product. I'm very happy with the stem coloration on that. Cotyledons are a gorgeous color and overall I think that looks like some very happy product. All right, the first of the regular trays is 183 grams. Okay, the second of the regular height trays. Again, that coloration is really nice on this. I am loving the purples down here. Doesn't seem as dark in the purple as that first tray did, but overall that is really, really gorgeous. one hundred and eighty four grams for the second of the normal tray so that's very consistent there 183 and 184 that is a very solid baseline okay here is the moment of truth this is the first of the uh lifted up 1.25 inches taller uh group right here this is the first one so let's go ahead and get our first cut and take a look so immediately i'm noticing a ton of purple in that stem I feel like it might be more purple higher up in the stem compared to the last groups. And the cotyledon color is actually just really beautiful on that here. Let me get it to where you can see it. Okay, so I'm very happy with this so far at first glance. Let's see if this provided us with a healthier harvest weight. All right, so the harvest weight for this one is 183 grams. That is hilarious. I've never seen something so consistent. And the very last of the riser trays. Again, I'm seeing some very beautiful purple coloration in the stems. 
And the cotyledon colors do look really, really healthy and nice also. Overall, I think that's a very solid looking product. Oh man, and then for the second of the closer to light groups, we had a harvest weight of 167 grams. I had to jinx it, didn't I? I said that everything was being really consistent here and that jinxed it and this one got a lower harvest weight. Okay, I have all of these side by side. I'm gonna go ahead and get this mess cleaned up and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Okay, so I've got these set all side by side now. If you guys will recall, these two groups right here are the regular ones and then these two groups here were the ones that were raised by one and a quarter inches. So let's talk about all the harvest weights. For the first of the regular height, we had 183 grams. And then for the second one, we had 184 grams. As for the lifted trays, the first tray had a surprising 183 grams, which was just mind boggling that we've had everything so similar. And then the second tray that I jinxed had a harvest weight of 167 grams. So the overall winner in harvest weight for this test is the regular trays over here that were at the regular height. I'm not sure what happened with this one tray here that had 167 grams. Uh, it seemed like everything was very consistent except for that one. Maybe it just had slightly worse germination or something like that. Now let's talk about the appearance of all of these side by side. I can immediately tell that this group is the lightest along with this group here. And then these two groups right here are our uh, darker ones. So these were probably the ones on the inside of the uh, lights. And these were the ones that were likely on the outsides of the lights. Taking a look at the two regular trays, again, not a whole lot of great coloration in the stem on this one, but the second group does have a lot of those beautiful purples that we're really looking for here in the stems. They go up into the cotyledons. As for the cotyledon coloration, it is a nice deep green. I would say that this tray over here had a lot of yellowing in it so it wasn't my favorites on growth but overall they both do look pretty dang solid now on to the two that were raised up i felt like these had much deeper purples as you guys can see right there let me get in close and now let's go back to the regular uh i guess it kind of depends because some of these are pretty dark over in the regular as well I feel like maybe these go up higher in the stem with their coloration. Yeah, I feel like the purple over here continues up the stem higher compared to uh, the two that were at normal height. So I do think that there is an appearance advantage uh, over here for the ones that were raised up. Okay, so the winner for appearance on this test, I'm gonna choose the two that were raised up that extra one and a quarter inches because it seems like they just have a lot more purples throughout that stem. And the coloration on the cotyledons is a very consistent uh, nice deep green with not a lot of yellowing like we saw over here on the regular trays. All right, so I'm gonna pull Mandy in here to do a taste test for us. Mandy. Ooh, these shelves looking so pretty. Ooh, this. Mandy. Ooh, this. All right, so I need you to do a taste test for us, please. Okay. Which one did you pull it from? Okay, the first little group over there. It tasted like purple krabi, right? Yes. Is that what it is? Yeah. It just tastes like purple krabi. I mean, there wasn't like a ton of flavor, um, but it wasn't like super mild. I don't know if that makes sense, but it was good. <laughs> okay, so thumbs up for it. Okay, cool. Right, go on the opposite spectrum. That one had a lot more flavor. Okay, that one had more flavor. Interesting. Yeah, like a lot more flavor. Which group did you just take from? This one. Okay. Or did I? <laughs> These two are basically the exact same flavor. This had a lot more flavor than this group did, but the taste was the same. Okay. That group still had a ton more flavor than this group, um, but I feel, I don't know, I feel like these three are kind of similar, but I think these ones have more flavor. Which one was your favorite? That one right there? Yes. All right, that is all we need. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so she chose overall winner of flavor to be the normal height one um, right here, which had a little bit more purple in it. I'm really surprised she said that this one with the, the most purple had the uh, least flavor apparently, but that is her assessment. So that's that. All right, let's go ahead and recap the winners for this experiment. The winner in overall harvest weight was the normal distance trays. The winner for the overall appearance was the trays that were placed a little bit closer. We saw just a little bit more purple in the stem colors there. 
and the winner for flavor, Mandy chose to be the normal distance trays. So the overall winner for this experiment is actually kind of up in the air at this point. I do feel that we saw a little bit of a benefit with the coloration being better on the trays that were closer to the light. I did not, however, see the boost in harvest weight that I would normally expect by having more par or higher output from lights. In different experiments that we've done using lights, we've always kind of found that the higher the par, the better uh, the harvest weight that we get. And that kind of hits a point though. With some crops, it, more par doesn't really help or more light doesn't help for some crops. I'm gonna continue to experiment with this and we will just see how this goes. Maybe I'm gonna end up on like six inch shelf heights. Maybe I go back to like 12 or 13 or something. Who knows, I'm gonna keep playing around with it. I just think it's a lot of fun to continue to do experiments like these to see how we can continue to figure out how to get the best growth with microgreens. You know, what little things can we change and how does that affect our growth? One thing I did not talk about in this experiment were the lights that were used. So this whole rack right here uses three of the Barina T5 20 watt LEDs per shelf for this entire rack. Now those lights only cost about 12 cents per day to run and I think their actual power draw is about 39 point something watts. That means that these lights are cheap to run and they're cheap to buy. All right guys, so I hope that you enjoyed this experiment. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below and we'd love to get those answered for you as soon as we possibly can. Our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms and our website is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you so much, have a great day and keep on believing.